And I, I guess I can still hear you guys. Hopefully you can still hear me. I guess if you're going to have problems with technology, I guess having it in the last week of semester, probably the best time to have it. All right. So, my friends, I'm going to share my screen. I want to... I had planned on doing an activity. I want to give another full day today with the ePortfolios because uh, yesterday I was able to see several of your ePortfolios. And uh, let me open up Notion. And if you guys want me to share links in Notion uh, of the pages that I'm sharing with you on my screen, just, just let me know. Um, if you're able to find these Notion pages on your own, uh, I hope that you've bookmarked some of these so that you can kind of see what we're doing day to day. Uh, just let me know. Just send um, a message in the chat if you anybody wants me to share links to the Notion pages. But uh, by now you should be somewhat familiar with um, our, our calendar. And I'm going to open that up now. And going to today, here we have our class, and then we have ePortfolio 7, just a continuation of working in our ePortfolio, basically the same page. I'm going to open that up now, and it looks like this. So the main thing from this page is the ePortfolio checklist. So please, as you're working with your teams, you're sharing what you're doing, with your ePortfolios and you're working individually and creating your own space, please refer to this checklist. And uh, make sure that you're checking each of these items that we've talked about in class as it relates to your own ePortfolio. You have a lot of options and degrees of choice in how you want to design your ePortfolios. I don't want them all necessarily to look alike. But there are certain things that I'm going to suggest that you do so that I feel that you'll have the best space and make it the easiest when you think about adding other content throughout not just this semester, but future semesters. I'm thinking long term. I want you to think long term in how you uh, add content to your online space. I wanted to make it easy. I don't want it to make it any more difficult than it needs to be. And so make sure as you're designing your space that you're, um, you know, choosing the best way for you to add content, right? So some of you might choose um, Google Sites. A lot of you are choosing Google Sites. That's great. Others are choosing Wix. That's fine. But yeah, make sure that you're uh, choosing something that is doable, that's easy for you to use. All right, so we have here, I'm gonna open up the ePortfolio page. And some of you have been sending me your updated links. I recommend that everyone continue sending me up updated links if you're making changes or changing your, um, your ePortfolio. If you look at this page, I left a memo, a message to those that I left feedback yesterday in class. So check out yesterday's recording of the class if, if I left feedback, if I mentioned or left a note here that I left feedback to your ePortfolio. Again, if anybody wants me to look at your ePortfolio outside of class, just send me a message and... I'll be happy to do that. I'll create a video and talk about your, uh, your e-portfolio and give you some suggestions. One of the main suggestions that I've been giving almost, not everyone, but a few, few of you, there are some templates, I think in Wix maybe, uh, this might be more applicable, but there might, uh, there might be some templates that don't support subpages. I'm, I'm not sure about that. Uh, but I know that some of the ePortfolios, all of the content is on one page, basically. And this is one thing that I highly suggest that you not do. I really want everyone to have a few sub-pages, that is, a page within a page um, that allows you 
to go into a dedicated page, one page for the, uh, for the content. So as an example, if you look at Jez's example here, she has some information on her homepage. Okay? This is general information, but notice that there's no information. There are no artifacts other than this initial video, which I'm suggesting that we all include either in the, the home page or if you have a dedicated about me page, you can also include your introduction there as well. I think that's a, both are good options. But other than that, in this example here that we're looking at, she has a lot of good content, but notice there's really no artifacts. And this is what I would suggest that you do so that the page doesn't become too cluttered. Like you don't have, you don't want to have too much information and imagine Four or five years later, if you continue to add artifacts to one page, to the home page, it's going to get really cluttered really quickly. And so again, I'm thinking long term. If this were just an assignment for this class and you were never going to touch this ePortfolio again, then I might say, you know what, maybe one page is fine. But that's not the intention of this ePortfolio. And this is not what I want you to think about when you're developing your ePortfolio. I don't want you to think that this is just an assignment for this one class for this one semester and you'll never look at it again. I really want you to think long term. Right? And and this is not going to be, you know, you may have some uh, teachers later on next semester or when you get into the BA, some classes they may never mention an ePortfolio. Right, But that doesn't mean that you can't take something that you learned or created from that class and put it into your own ePortfolio. Some of this is going to be entirely up to you. Now, there are, there are other classes where portfolios in general, the concept of portfolios is part of the class. And, and in those cases, maybe it aligns more to what you're doing here with, this, with your own ePortfolio. But a lot of this is going to be on your own. And again, I want you to think long term. I want you to imagine yourself graduating from this university with a bachelor's degree in English language teaching where you have a resume and you have an e-portfolio together. So when you go for a job interview, you can say, hey, look at my online e-portfolio. Here's my resume. I want this job, whatever, or you think you have the qualifications, they're going to look at your ePortfolio and they're going to know a heck of a lot more about you by looking at your ePortfolio than simply looking at a resume. And that's the intention. Remember that an ePortfolio is to show off what you know, your knowledge, your skills, and your ethics or your values, or your attitudes or disposition, however you want to explain it. It should represent those three things as a professional. And so this is why I am asking if someone asks me, well, do I have to change it? If, I, if all of my content is on one page, do I have to change my template to create subpages? And my answer is going to be, well, yeah, I would suggest that you do that. Right? I, it might be a pain to start over again, but believe me, it's a lot easier to do it now than three or four years from now where you realize, wow, I've got, you know, page, I've got so many, uh, so many artifacts in this one page. I have to scroll down for days, just going down and down and down and down. So that is uh, the one thing that I want everyone to see and check first before anything else. Do you have subpages set up? And so in Jazz's case, uh, she has a drop down menu on the left hand side, right? And uh, she has under skills, she has different, all of these are subpages. This is a page, this is a page, this is a page, this is a page, and this is a page. These are all subpages. So there is. Um, it's very it's organized for one 
right? And we can jump right to all the different artifacts that she decides to include. Right now, not everyone has to do exactly the same thing. Now, in this case, she's probably going to put some artifacts in each one of these. If she doesn't doesn't plan to put on put any artifacts in these pages, well, maybe the page is not necessary. Remember, I'm not uh, requiring that you have artifacts from every class this semester. I would like for you to have at least five artifacts from our class, listening and speaking and at least five artifacts from some other class that you're taking in Prope. So if you have a lot of artifacts, let's say in writing, and you want to just dedicate all of your other artifacts, your five additional artifacts or more in writing, then great. Maybe you just have a writing subpage and a listening and speaking subpage, as an example. This is where you can decide what kind of artifacts, how many you want, and uh, what classes you want to include outside of listening and speaking. Okay, I, I would like to have at least five for our class. And we have so many to choose from that that shouldn't be too difficult. I mean, just the episodes, just the uh, podcast episodes alone, how many uh, podcast episodes do we have to choose from? 15 or 16. So right there, you've got a lot to choose from. But they don't all have to be list. They don't have to be a podcast. They could also be any Flipgrid videos that you created. They could be any of the videos that you created and uploaded in your uh, group activities, your group work that you did in Microsoft Teams. So we, you also have a lot of artifacts located there, right? As as an example for our class. All right. So um, I I hope this kind of clarifies and I, I want to spend again in fact before we divide up in our teams and get going here I want to ask if anyone has any questions that um, that all of us can benefit from regarding your e-portfolio because I some of you are were sending me messages uh, make, asking some questions uh, but I think we can all benefit from your questions if you guys have some that you want to ask uh, at this time. So any questions, guys, about your your e-portfolios and its design or how to include different artifacts? No questions. Wow. No questions. Are you sure? No one has any questions about any aspect of your e-portfolio that you would like to share. Because believe me, if you have a question, someone else is going to benefit from hearing the answer. So no one has any questions. No one. How many of us do we have here this morning? Wow, 33. You guys are a great group, I'll tell you. I, and let me say that I've really enjoyed having you guys this, this semester. Um, you know, it's been crazy with having classes online. And, you know, it's, it's hard not to be able to see you guys, whether it's in the video or not. But I can see you guys as a group are making a great effort with the, the work that we're doing. And... Uh, yeah, I've really enjoyed having you guys. This, I mean, we're still we got the rest of the week, but I just want to throw that out there that um, you guys are are a great group. I mean, it takes it takes a, a lot of what's the gumption? It takes a lot of drive, motivation to do these classes. And I know some days we're more motivated than others, right? Your teachers included, and it just really. Um, when I look back, and I hope when you guys look back and we get through this and we're back to f the real life, having classes face-to-face, -face, the exposure that you guys have had with technology, even though maybe it's, it's worked in some cases and maybe in some cases it hasn't worked, but you are going to be in a unique position having had these experiences with technology going forward. And this is going to, I think, have 
a positive impact on how you approach your own teaching, how you get into the profession and the choices that you make with technology. Um, I think you're going to be better off um, going through this difficult situation, but I think one of the positives here is that you're going to have a new outlook, a new perspective on technology. Again, thinking in terms of what to do and what not to do, right? And I hope that as you're taking classes this semester and then in the future that you are looking at and thinking, wow, okay, for me, this technology works for this type of activity, uh, maybe, or it doesn't work, right? And you're, you're learning and deciding for yourself also what works, right? And what doesn't? Because when you start to te teach and you start uh, working with your own learners and your own students, you're going to be making the same decisions that we make every day as teachers. Like, okay, what technologies do I use? What do I not use? How do I try to create, you know, right, the best, right, the best activity and dynamic for this particular purpose? But, all right, guys, enough of me rambling on. I'm going to go ahead and mute my mic. I'm going to continue working in Notion, and I'm going to keep leaving messages as I did yesterday. And I'm going to say something like, left feedback, today's December 8th. I'll leave a, a little note here. If anybody wants me to look at your ePortfolio first right away, just leave a, a message in the chat right now, and I'll look at your ePortfolios uh, first. I would ask that those that I left comments to yesterday so I can give a chance to see everyone, that you would hold off and wait until I have a chance to see everyone, everyone else's ePortfolio first, uh, just so that it, um, I can give uh, some feedback to everyone um, as soon as possible. Okay, so um, anyone want me to look at your ePortfolio getting started here today? You can either post your request in the chat or, of course, turn your microphone on. Let me know. And otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and mute my mic. And we'll come back at 940. I'm going to give us another day today to work on our ePortfolios, really spend some time creating your artifacts, creating your reflections. Remember that all artifacts need to have a reflection. All artifacts need to have an audio or video reflection that where you're talking about what you learned from the experience. Okay, so it's a combination of the artifact itself, right? A document, an audio or video that you did in class this semester, and then a new video or audio that is a reflection where you talk about what was difficult, what you learned, what you achieved, what you liked and disliked, whatever you want to reflect on that experience, you can share in a separate audio or video that's also going to be included in your ePortfolio. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and mute my mic. Let's go ahead and d divide up into our teams. Uh, work with your team, share your ideas, suggest, help each other out, and continue working. And uh, again, just jump right in if, you, if anybody wants me to look at your ePortfolio. Okay, I'm going to go ahead. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, Susie's. Your, I'm going to talk about your ePortfolio. I don't know if you're here. It doesn't matter. I'm trying to record these so you can also go back if you're with your teammates. If you're in the class right now, of course, jump in if you want to make any comments as I'm describing or talking about your own ePortfolio. Let me go ahead and leave a message here that I am leaving you feedback. Today is December 8th, okay? All right, and I think we've talked, I think I've spoken about yours 
uh, before, but uh, yeah, I like I like the the main page. You've got your your name here, your picture, a greeting, and about uh, you have about the author. Mm. You might want to think about either saying something like you can say about me, or you can say about uh, you could say the content creator if you want to be more general. The only thing about saying author is you're limiting yourself to writing usually, right? So uh, some of the content that you're creating in this page will also be, it might be related to writing, but it also might be related to uh, speaking, listening and speaking. And so that would be the only thing that maybe I would consider instead of saying the author because um, you're also exploring other skills and and so... Um, yeah, you could, I'm, th I'm trying to think of some other options about, uh, I think about me is probably a pretty good option, right? And again, you can choose to put it here like you have it. I think that's a good idea. Or some, some, uh, choose to have a separate page for about me, but either way, I think are, are very good options. So you have an introduction now here. Just to clean this up a little bit, I'm not sure if there's a way to remove the URL. I like just having the video and having, like you have here, introduction. And then if you want to replace anything, it's just a, like a one sentence kind of an introduction or, you know, that's fine. Or if you want to remove that entirely, I think I, I would do that just to kind of clean it up a little bit. That would be... Uh, my suggestion. Mm, but I, I like how you have titles off to the right, how to browse this site, right? So that's excellent because it's very clear what each video does. And you've chosen to separate those two instead of creating one. And that's fine too. If anyone's listening to this, you can choose to have one video to talk about in, introducing yourself and introducing the website into one video, or you can divide it up. And here, uh, Susie has decided to divide it up and I think that's a, a good option as well. Now along the bottom, I don't know if you're planning on including your your email. I would suggest that you not include your email, not include your address, nor your phone number. So in this case, I would remove this extraneous information along the bottom of the screen, right? Just to just so that you don't get a lot of spam and get a lot of, you know, information that that you don't want now there are ways to have others contact you there are forms that a lot of times these templates will automatically include and i'm not sure if well well with google you could just create uh i forget what the, i guess it's a form i'm thinking microsoft 365 i don't know if they call it the same but it's basically like a a form, it's not a quiz necessarily, but it's like a, yeah, a, an online form in Google that you could insert into your space to say, okay, if you want to reach out to me, if you want to contact me, then include your name, your email, and then a message, right? And that's a good way to have others be able to contact you without you giving up your email. And so... And that would be a good place to include it, either your home page or if you have a dedicated about me page, then that that would be good as well. I like the navigational options here um, and you have you have a sub page for grammar, you have a sub page for for writing. So this is great. I really like this. This is um, you've got um, here the work now you might and you've got good titles here i don't know if there's a way to remove some of this white space between the title types of dependent clauses and the documents it's it's not bad but you know if there's a way to bring that up closer fine if not not a big deal i like how you have each of these documents labeled right and adjective clause noun clause um and then a reflection. Again, if there's a way to remove the link, I would suggest doing that. I mean, if, if it's not possible, fine. But um, again, I, I don't think it's necessary really to, to include that. 
And here you have compound sentences. If there's any type of heading that would distinguish between these three, like you did here at the top, I would also encourage you to include some sort of subheading along the bottom, just like you did up here. And I would be consistent with how you're labeling in, in terms of having a, a title below in this case. Um, yeah, and I, again, the white space, I'm not sure if that's by design or if there's a way in the template when you go into your dashboard, if there's a way to remove some of that. It just looks like there's a little bit too much white space uh, between the headings and the, some of your artifacts. So again, think about headings if possible. Now, even though you have, you're going to include video reflections, there's nothing wrong with having a line or two of text that also kind of describes anything here about what you're, you're talking about, if that makes sense. Like if you could put maybe one or two sentences under, under this, like maybe, you know, uh, some, to, to provide some context, even though maybe you talk about it, maybe you talk more in detail about it in the reflection, uh, just having one or two sen uh, sentences here kind of at, at a glance before we listen to the video gives us kind of an idea about what we're looking at. And so if there's any text that you can include there, that might, that might be something to think about. Right, but I, I like what you have here with uh, the artifacts that you've chosen. Here we have culture. And again, kind of the same idea. Like, I like how you're including this information. Maybe a, a line or two of text, not a lot, but just a couple of comments about what it is we're looking at. And you might even say something like, after you provide a line or two of uh, context, maybe give instructions to the user to say, okay, you can listen or watch my reflection. Just click on the reflection below to hear, you know, how you uh, describe or how do you explain some of the artifacts, right? Just to give them kind of, uh, kind of a, a direction on how to navigate because they may miss, it's possible that they scroll down to here and they miss completely your reflection. I might just go here and say, oh, okay, all right, I don't see anything here. But if you have some sort of introduction, a, a line of text here at the top, then they're less likely to miss the reflection video or audio that you have at the bottom. Again, I'm not sure about the, the link. You can ask me about this if, this if you have a question about, about this. Maybe we can find a way to remove that uh, just to kind of clean it up a, a bit. We have reading. All right, same idea. So, yeah, I think you've got the right idea. And I like how this inserts here. It looks like a PDF. And that looks good. And I guess we could open that up if we needed to. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. That's good. Yeah, so it's coming together. Susie, I like some of the decisions you've made and how you designed the, the page. It's very easy to navigate, easy to get around, and uh, I think that's one of your objectives. And uh, you've, you've done that very well here. So um, the last thing I would say is think about how you want to organize these pages, maybe alphabetical. A comes before B, comes before C, maybe. Um, yeah, think about how you want to organize that as well. And yeah, that's basically all I have. If you're, if you're listening, Susie, if you have any questions, just jump in. Or if you have anything that you want to ask. Okay, is this a this is a video in your 
Google Drive, right? Okay. It, I'm sorry? Uh-huh. Uh, okay, because that was going to be my suggestion, would be to try, because you're going to use up your space really quickly. I mean, if you have a free account with Google, you're going to use up your space very quickly. Um, uh, so, and so I don't want you to use up, especially with video, you're, you're not going to be able to, I, I don't, I can't remember how much space you get for free. Um. Let me think. Uh, what problem is is it a um, is it you're having problems uploading? Like it takes a long time, or do you get an error, or what's happening? Okay. Uh huh. Ok. Bueno, voy, estoy viendo ahorita mi app de YouTube. Y, uh, me permite saber. Um, porque estoy... Yo pensé, si es nada más un video de, de tu cara, ¿verdad? Que no estás compartiendo tu pantalla. Mm. Ah, ok. Porque yo, yo pensé que hay una manera que puedes subir directamente a YouTube utilizando la app en tu celular. Eh, como estás, es lo que estoy viendo ahorita en mi celular, cómo, cómo hacerlo. O, o también directamente de tu browser, de tu compu. A ver, déjame compartir. I'm going to go ahead and... In fact, I am sharing my screen. Let me go to Studio. I don't know if this is like an option from any YouTube page, but there's a YouTube Studio that says here, Create and Go Live. Now, with the Go Live, and you might be like, well, you might be kind of nervous about going live, but I, I would try not to worry about it. I mean... Uh, depending on how popular your space is, you may or may not have, and even if someone is watching you, I mean, who cares really? I mean, at the end of the day. Um, but let, I'm going to try, I'm going to click this and see. I'm probably going to have some problems because I'm, I'm recording and I'm also in Teams. But let me try this. All right. Can you still hear me? All right. So this takes you here to the studio, and you're basically setting up to broadcast live on your channel. But the thing that you're that you want is that it's going to record your video, right? You're gonna you're gonna get a recording in your video. So I'm gonna back up now. I'm gonna get out of this and show you in this in your own studio. You're gonna create. These videos, you'll notice in my channel, I have uploads. These are videos that I upload from my computer. But the live, these are videos that were created automatically by going live in YouTube. And so I would experiment with this and see if you can create a video. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Um, if you can create a video in YouTube that is automatically generated here. Now, let, let me show you what you can do once you cre you've created these videos. And you can do this multiple times until you're happy with the performance, right, that you've done. But you can still go in, and I'm going to go to one that uh, I created. Let me see if I can do this. All right, I'm going to open this up. Now I'm inside this one video that I created live and if I click on editor there are some things that you can edit and this is not really intuitive right but it does work uh so uh, you give it a second 
because it does take a second here to show. And you'll notice if you can see my screen, it's kind of difficult, but here's the timeline. This is the video itself, right, that I'm showing. Now notice here below, it took a second to pop to open up, but this is the audio. So let's say that you're recording in YouTube and you make a mistake. Just keep recording, stop, right? Give it some space and then start again and continue that way until you finish your reflection or your video. Then you can go into editor here and you can zoom in. I'm going to click trim. And let's say that like you see right here, this, there's a, this looks like dead space. So I click trim and click split and I can select a range. Do that. I can click and drag. And what I'm selecting now is something to remove. And then I can do it again, split, do it here or whatever. This is just an example, but I can click here, split. Right, and so what I'm doing is I'm selecting that space, right, that uh, to edit the video. Now it's not, again, it's not uh, real easy to use. It's kind of weird to to do this uh, in this way, but it does work. And you can click save, and then it it removes the selected, the grayed out sections that I've done here. So. There is a way, and, and again, maybe you just do it over and over until you just are happy with, with the, the, the reflection. And that's what I would suggest that you do is just practice enough. And if you make mistakes, I mean, I'm not, you know, I don't want you to worry too much about making mistakes in these reflections. Just talk off the top of your head, reflect on it. Don't worry about making mistakes. And I think this is one way that you can create this uh, your videos in YouTube, and then you can go ahead and Im embed those into your ePortfolio. Uh, again, the the phone, I, I was almost certain there was a way to do it, but I don't see a way to do it from your phone. But again, if you can do it from your computer, um, you know, that's a way to do it. Now, the second way to think about doing it, you you mentioned that you tried to create the video from your phone. Have you tried to create a video in Microsoft Teams, download that that video and then upload it to YouTube. Have you tried that? And you were not successful in doing that? Oh, okay. Well, that's another thing to try is you can create the video on your computer, right? Uh, using Microsoft Teams, and then download that computer. I'm um, download computer. Download the the video onto your computer, and then try to upload that to your own YouTube channel. Now you, you may have some limitations in the time, like how long the video is. So just double check that first. You know, if uh, I don't know if it's 15 minutes or 10 minutes, or I don't know, or I don't know what the if you have any limitations so that you don't go over. Um, but certainly that's another way uh, to, to do it. Um, I'll give you one other option, archive.com, Internet Archive. Internet Archive. Now this is outside of YouTube and all of that, but it's certainly one option also. Uh, you can basically create videos and upload it to Internet Archive, create a username, password, and you can upload here. Let me show you what that looks like. So here, this is uh, now I've signed in and I have my own library here. I've uploaded some videos in the past. And this is another way that you can upload videos. Okay, and this is um, just an, an online space. There are no requirements. I mean, it can be as long as you want. Um, there's no limitation to, I, to my understanding. Uh, so you can upload whatever you want to this.
It's under a Creative Commons license. So if you're uploading any content, you're agreeing to upload it and as a Creative Commons material. Okay. So this is another option. Internet Archive, of course, YouTube, maybe Microsoft Teams, try that. Um, and uh, yeah, see if you, you can uh, figure it out here. And uh, let me know, Susie, if, if you're still having some problems after you've kind of explored some of the things we've talked about here today. Any, any other questions, uh, Susana? All right, so you know that you can upload audio only to YouTube. So again, I would go to YouTube again, and uh, and you know you're just not going to have any video, but you could have, you know, you can do audio and then in, insert that into your uh, space. Um, let me see. Check script here. If anyone is using, like I know in the case of like Monica, she has a public um, podcast. You could also use that if you're going to post it. Let me see here. Uh, I think Scribd is only for documents, but I, I just want to, what's the deal here? Mm, can't get doesn't want me to get in. There we go. So can I upload audio? That's what I want to see. Yeah, that's just for documents. All right. Um, all right. Going back to Internet Archive, you can you can upload audio as well. So maybe maybe uh, look at Internet Archive. You would have to create an account, but it's it's free and there are no limits really, to my knowledge, in terms of audio or video. So if you notice here along the top, you know they have space for audios, and basically this is just a an open source kind of a um, it's an organization that is just trying to share content, basically. And so I would take advantage of Internet Archive. And um, let me go back to my space and show you what it looks like when you start to upload. Like when you sign in, you get an option to upload. And you just click and drag or upload your files uh, to the space. And then when you click and drag into this page, then it will ask you for like a title. It'll ask you for information that you complete. And then once it's set up, then you can go into your own library where you can find the audio and video. Now, I think most of mine are video, but let me see if I have any audio to show you what that looks like. Okay, here are some of the audios that I've uploaded. So these are all audio only. And from here, you should be able to embed or link. Let me open it up. All right, so this is, all right, this is something I created some time ago. And yours will look like this. Now, notice here, download options. You can download it in these different formats. And I'm trying to find a link here. So you can click. See, where's the share button? Here we go. Share this item. And from here, you can either embed. This is nice because you can embed this and it looks like it looks like something like this. It gives a little player that you can play automatically from your website. Theoretically, that's how this, this works. All right. So um, let me just see what happens. I don't know. I've never tried this with Notion. But let me try it real quick just to see. 
It would be very similar to what you do in Google Sites, I'm assuming. You should be, have a way to embed HTML. And it's just really about copy and pasting that content. Let me see if I can try this. Embed. Let's see what this looks like. All right, so yeah, it's not really the prettiest thing in the world in this case. It's going to depend on what Google does and how Google, um, you know, how it uh, turn, converts the HTML. Let me try one more thing. I'm going to try to link it. Should be a way just to get a link. Uh, let me try just the URL up here. Now this will be, it might be different depending on how Google deals with this, but in Notion, try this. Maybe the same. Yeah, it's the same. Well, at least, at least if you can't embed it, I mean, it's always, it's always better to try to embed it just because it looks nicer. But the worst case scenario, is you just create a link or maybe even an image with a link that you click and it opens up in a another browser, another window like this, right? So I could click on this and then it would take me to another page. You could also do that as well and then play, play the audio. Um, just experiment and uh, see what you can do and maybe try, start with YouTube first and see what you can do if you like it. Use that. Internet Archive, I think, is another option. I'll continue looking around and see if I can find a better solution. If you find something else or you are just not happy with those options, let me know. We can continue looking for other ways to uh, include audio in your ePortfolio. Okay? All right. You're welcome. Yes. Okay, and what where are you trying to upload? I direct But you're trying to upload to Wix, or have you tried to upload to YouTube and then embed into your ePortfolio? Have you tried that? Okay, maybe try that and see if that works for you. Okay. Uh, sure. For, for our class, listening, speaking, yeah, you're going to have either audios or videos for your artifacts. That's fine. Yeah, because that's, that's what we basically have been doing. Uh, your writing class might be different. Your grammar class, might, you might have different types of artifacts, but yeah, that's fine. Okay, your reflections, they can be audio or video. It's up to you. Uh-huh. That's right.
Yeah, you can include documents. You can cl- include PDF files that you've created. Anything that you've created in other classes that you want to talk about, those will work as artifacts. That that's fine. Yeah, you can decide if you want to create one reflection to talk about several artifacts, or maybe you have one reflection per artifact. It depends on what you want to say. It depends on the artifact. It depends on how you're going to reflect on those different artifacts. So it's really up to you how many audio or video reflections that you want to include to discuss your artifacts. Of course, yeah, and and I would I would include it some like I was mentioning and suggesting to Susanna that um, you know you could have a few lines of text to kind of explain maybe the context of what we're looking at or maybe even give instructions to the user to say to to view the reflection go to the bottom and click you know on whatever right so. Make it, you want to make it as easy as possible to navigate around your ePortfolio so that people are, know what you're looking at. They're not going to know, you know anything about you. They're not going to know anything about the artifacts. So try to make it uh, as easy to follow and to understand when they're visiting your subpages. Of course, of course, of course. I mean, if you, you can change anything that you, you want. We're working this week on modifying your ePortfolio. So um, I want to try to finish for Friday. But of course, any, any changes that you make, that I encourage you to do that. If you want to use different artifacts or you want to change the template, I, hopefully no one's changing templates still. I, but still, if you say, no, I, this is just not working, I got to change the template, Great, that's fine, uh, but try to finish for Friday. Um. Mm-hmm. Of course, you can look. You can you can uh, follow what Susie's doing, or you can do your own thing. You can do something differently, right? So the whole idea is to get ideas from your classmates to say, okay, I like this, I don't like that, right? You have a choice on how you want to do it. So you take what your classmates are doing, and you do what works for you. But you don't have to do exactly what you know someone else is doing. It's up to you, right? Okay. So, okay. Yeah, you know, uh, Tanya, I'm not really, I don't want to give you a time. I, I want you to, to just think, okay, what, how much time do I need to say what I need to say? And my feedback will be more about what you say. I might say, well, maybe you talk a little bit longer here or maybe you talk too long here or whatever. Um, but I'm really not looking for, or I don't want to say a particular time because then you're going to try to say what you want to say within a time frame. And I r- would rather you just think first, what do I want to say? And and you're already doing what I want you to do. You're saying, okay, maybe my video, I feel like my video is too long. I want to shorten it. Okay, that's that's enough. That's That's good enough, right? Without even thinking six minutes or five minutes, I want you to say, well, what I say, I just, it's too long based on what I say, not because it's six minutes. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Right. Um, 
Okay, great. You're welcome. Okay, I'm going to look at uh, Dan's ePortfolio. And uh, okay, looking at the home page. All right, I like uh, the background. Um, I noticed that um, the contrast between the welcome to my portfolio, I, I like the title, I like the menu at the top. Uh, my only suggestion is if, Adan, you can check if you have some options and colors in the way that this welcome message appears because if you notice that it's a little bit difficult to read i mean i can make it out but there's not a lot of contrast between the gray background and the gray colored font they're they're different tones right but again it's i would try to make this as uh clear like in as br not bright necessarily but just better contrast so that this message does not get lost whatsoever and even this, these menus, the black isn't bad. In fact, it's almost like when it highlights, it's easier to read. But notice that the red it becomes a little bit difficult. I, I would rather the, the color contrasts of your menus just pop out. They like, are super clear and really easy to read, even before you highlight over. Again, it, it's easy to read when it highlights. But even that red, you know, and, and you might think, well, you might even decide if you want to keep that red versus black for home. That's up to you. But uh, I think the color contrast, um, I, would check, I would check that. And, and notice how the drop-down menu kind of goes over this heading where it says portfolio. These are all design uh, comments how to make the design of your e-portfolio consistent, professional. And, you know, notice here that you have a different background for this versus this. And I would try to be consistent. Maybe even use the same type of fonts that you have in your menus as you have in your heading, your titles, here. Um, all right, so here you have... So notice here you have one, two, three, four different types of fonts. And I don't know what the, the rule is, but I've always heard sometimes less is more when you think about the different types of fonts that you have on one page. So sometimes simplifying and maybe just choosing a font. This could be one font here, maybe one font here. Maybe these this text is the same font as this, perhaps. But that would be my, my comment to think about maybe the types of fonts and the color contrast that you've uh, chosen for this template. And again, just double check and see what your options are for this template in terms of color contrast. All right, I like what you have here in the video. I don't know if you're planning on having a separate video for About Me. It looks like that's what you're uh, thinking about. Um, if you're not, then I would probably not, is it, let me refresh this. I mean, if you're not going to have another video for about me, um, then you can decide on, I mean, if you really need an image here, or maybe you just bring this text up. Um, I'm not sure. Um, I, I would almost inclined to think that um, I'm inclined to think that you would be better off just having a, a video describing who you are. Maybe have some, and maybe remove some of the the text. You know, it's it's up to you. Uh, just these are some suggestions, and again, you know, do what you want. Do in terms of you know what what you want to include in this homepage. These are some just some suggestions. Yeah. All right. So let's go into some of your sub pages. All right. So notice here the contrasts. 
And I don't know if you want to have a welcoming, welcome to my ePortfolio on every subpage, but it's up to you. Uh, typically, we see these types of um, these messages on the homepage only, not necessarily on the subpages. It's up to you. But if you are going to keep that here, I would again check your contrast. Here is a good example of really not being able to read. It almost gets lost completely because of the color contrast between the, the color of the, the font in the background. Go to writing. Yeah, I really like the backgrounds. Again, color contrast up here. Um, all right, so it's, this is fine. Just uh, that looks looks fine here. Click on let's click on click on the uh, PDF. Okay, that opens up. That's good. And it looks like you have here the reflection. Looks like it was, I guess you uploaded, I'm not sure if you uploaded this to YouTube or, or uploaded it to the site itself. Either way, I mean, it works. It looks good. Yeah, I... I like how you're including some text. Uh, I'm wondering if maybe the text, like maybe this, because here, here's the thing. The video is to provide a reflection. So any text that you use here probably doesn't need to reflect on the, uh, necessarily on the artifact maybe you provide some context that you don't mention in the reflection that would help better understand what it is we're looking at so maybe it's like a title or a heading or maybe just a sentence or two that uh, just introduces very briefly what it is we're looking at and then the reflection video or audio will take it a step further and go into the reflection itself so I'm just thinking like some of what you have in written form might be best expressed in the reflection itself. That That's a suggestion that, that I have here. I mean, it, it looks good, all right? And again, you ultimately can make the final decision um, how you want to do this. Um, Yeah, and I really like what you're saying in, in the text. I, it would be interesting to hear this also in your reflection, and maybe you do mention it. Um, notice here the drop-down menu kind of gets lost here. And then this is kind of what I'm looking at in each of the pages, how the contrast comes up. And notice now the, the color switches. You've got red on home and black on cor courses. Um, consistency, simplifying, and sometimes these backgrounds can actually be a distraction. Although I think this is a cool background, at the end of the day, the main thing is, is it easy to read? Is it easy to navigate? And this is two, these are two questions I want you to ask yourself throughout each of your pages. Is it easy to read? Is it easy to navigate? And the second question, it's, it is easy to navigate. Um, but it should be very easy to read, right? There should be uh, no space or no place within the ePortfolio that makes it a little bit difficult to, to read. And anytime you get a background like this where you're including these, um, these texts, text over text automatically makes it a little bit more difficult to read. Now, again, I can read this, but Sometimes less is more. Sometimes um, simplifying the color background actually has a better effect. Okay, so these are suggestions, Idan. You really have a great start. I, I like what you're doing with the ePortfolio, um, but these are some things that come to mind when I take a look at your ePortfolio. Okay, so again, uh, good job. If you have any questions about your ePortfolio, uh, don't hesitate to uh, contact me. Okay, Alonso, taking a look here at your main page, your ePortfolio. You've got your name here, ePortfolio. Looks like you're still working on it. 
Let me know if you have any questions about putting together your e-portfolio. We need to finish by this Friday. So um, I would take a look at some of the comments that I've been making to uh, your classmates to get some ideas about what we're looking for. Make sure that you're also looking at the checklist. And I'm going to pop that up here on my screen as well. And you can find the checklist in any of the ePortfolio assignments today, uh, just today, December 8th. We're working on ePortfolio 7. And here's where you can find the checklist. So make sure that you go through this ePortfolio checklist one by one to make sure that you're including everything that you need to in your ePortfolio. Okay, Andrea, let's take a look at yours. Okay, Andrea, it looks like, I don't know if you gave me an up-to-date link. Send a message here in the chat. All right, uh, Carlos, let's take a look at yours. I think we've looked at this before. It's coming together nicely. Um, I like how you have your... Navigational menu. I think I would change artifacts though for, uh, in this case, skill development or English skill development or just English skills or maybe just even skills. Uh, these are all, I think, options for replacing the word artifacts since artifacts is, um, is basically where, you know, you're going to have later, you're going to have additional sub pages or subcategories. And so basically all the artifacts are going to be in all the different pages. All right, so it looks like you're still working on yours. Um, I'm not sure. Okay, yeah, so maybe I wasn't clear before because I think we have talked about this. I would put English skills and replace artifacts. All right, so English skills needs to be up here and then all of these subpages, listening, speaking, reading, grammar and context, writing, uh, are will follow under English skills, if that makes sense. Contact me probably is going to be best. Uh, I think I would move that to about me, or you know, maybe you consolidate these two pages where you have about me page and this contact that has a form. Right, maybe this information you merge with your about me. All right, so I would just have the contact over here as part of about me, merge those two, and then just have listening and speaking, reading, grammar, writing under a category, under a title or heading called English skills. All right, so we go to now. When we go to listening and speaking, I would have a heading at the top that says listening and speaking. Notice now we're not sure where we are, right? Even though we click on listening and speaking, we're not sure we're under a page called listening and speaking. So I would include a heading here. Probably the same for reading. Let's take a look. Okay, maybe this is not, uh, you're still working on it, so come back. If you're not going to have any artifacts, then you're probably not going to need a separate subpage. So here we have grammar and context. So again, headings. I would include a heading and some text to kind of talk about, provide some context about what, what it is we're looking at. All right, so um, here you have an audio. I would try to find ways, if you can, to maybe bring in those audios using, um, like now you're using Google Drive. And the, th the reason I'm suggesting not to use Google Drive for audio and video only is because it's going to take up a lot of your, your space. And if you're using a free account, you're going to be limited. Uh, and I'm afraid you're going to use up fairly quickly your free space, the amount that you have uh, for uh, using G Google Drive in this case. So I talked earlier with uh, Susie about different options, and Internet Archive is one where you can create an account called Internet Archive. You can create an account and upload 
as far as I know, unlimited audio and video. And so here in my case, I have had uh, an account for some time now. And if you click here to upload, notice it's just a very easy click and drag or, um, you know, you can easily upload files, audio, video. You can basically upload any type of file, a text file even if you wanted to. But once you've done that, you can go to your own library and then here's where you can access all of your videos whether whether they're audio or videos right and then you can embed those click here you have options to download with these file formats and you have options to share share this item this gives you options to share you can share links and here I'm trying to see how you can do that. Here you can embed. There should be a way to share the link, although I'm, I'm still looking on how to do that. But uh, you could experiment with these iframes to see if you can embed these audio or videos into your own space. So this is uh, another option for you if you want to try to uh, embed the audio directly into your ePortfolio. So again, I would use a little bit more text, maybe some headings to kind of explain kind of what, what it is we're looking at, and then the video or audio will re provide it a reflection. Yeah, so notice here you have prepositional verbs here, um, but nothing up here. You have past perfect, but maybe just a sentence or two to kind of provide some context about the artifacts that you've included in this page. This is what I would consider for each of the pages, right, that you're developing with your artifacts. Okay, but you've got a really good start. Carlos, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me via Microsoft uh, chat. Okay, Cielo, looking at your ePortfolio. Very nice uh, homepage. And looking at your home page here, what I would suggest is that you create sub pages and making sure that you have maybe a menu system along the top of your screen where you have uh, some options to go directly to those sub pages. And we've talked a lot about uh, having categories like skill development as one, maybe a teaching methodology is another category. Applied linguistics is another, and also a practicum. Those are all the types of classes that you're going to be taking throughout the BA. And as we're thinking about setting up our own ePortfolio long term, not just for this class, it might make sense to start thinking about these categories and creating uh, a navigational bar that has titles that reflect those types of classes that you're going to take later on. For our case, we're basically concentrating on skill development. So any type of heading that reflects that, for example, skills or English skills, uh, those would be some good options to include in your navigational bar. But we want to try to avoid having just one page where we have all of the artifacts, only because when you contribute, as you contribute to this space later on with all of your artifacts, after three or four or five plus years of artifacts, you're going to have a lot of content on one page. So we can think about maybe creating a navigational bar, and I would begin looking at some of your classmates and some of the feedback that I've been providing. I'm trying to offer video feedback um, as transparent as possible so that you can kind of compare and contrast what you're doing with your ePortfolio with what others are doing and how I'm providing feedback to some of your classmates to give you some ideas about what you want to do for your own space. Now I just notice here, I don't know if this popped up. Okay, now it popped up. I didn't see this earlier. I don't know how I missed it. Okay. That's weird. Let me refresh again. Okay. I guess either I just totally missed it yeah, this is right. This is what uh, what I would suggest that you do. Sorry about that. 
All right, so here we go. We have listening, speaking, and looks like you're still working on it. But yeah, this is exactly what I was suggesting. I, I guess I just missed it. Um, and so try to think about yeah how you want to organize your artifacts and uh, try to finish for this Friday. And let me know if you have any questions about how you design your your online space here. All right, Dai, let's look at your homepage. All right, very good. I like, uh, I like the title. It's easy to read. Your name, I'm almost thinking it might be better to have it a little bit larger or maybe off to the side or the corner. I, this is um, really about, you know, about your own personal space, and I don't want the name to get lost. Notice how the contrast, it's not... I mean, I can read it, but I I would, again, either make it a little bit larger, maybe in bold, maybe even put it off to the side, perhaps. Um, you might, since you have ePortfolio at the top left-hand corner of your screen, you might even just put your name where you have ePortfolio here. I don't know if you change this heading in the middle of the screen, if this will change what you have in the corner. If it doesn't, I would just put your name in large font size here in the middle, right? So it's just that much uh, more clear in terms of, you know, who this is and who you are, all right? Um, okay. Now, maybe this text here, uh, I, I like having some text. This is kind of a uh, balance thing. It's like you don't want to have too much and you don't want... You, sometimes you know you need to have enough text to to navigate around, but some of this information that you currently have in your um, as text, you're going to end up saying in your reflection. And if you looked at the feedback I provided earlier today for Susana, we talked about some alternatives to these links, and I. I'm not sure. I haven't looked at uh, Google Sites in a while. Mm, I'm not sure if there's a way that you can try to avoid the link. And, you know, there, even if you have like an image and you create a link to that image where you just click on the link, click on the, the image to access the link, I think would be uh, make it more attractive, make the page more attractive. Like, even if you. Your, the image of yourself, you created a, a link to that image where if I clicked on the image, it would take you to that link. That would be one way to do it. Now, I will say this. If you're using Google Drive for audios and videos, um, I would suggest that you not do that only because if you have a free account with Google, you're going to take up, I'm afraid, uh, a lot of your free space with audio and video. And so thinking long term, you know, later you're, you're going to have to make a decision and end up changing all of these audios and videos just because maybe you don't want to buy uh, more space on your, your Google account. So I would take advantage of YouTube, both for audio and video. Know that uh, YouTube, you can upload audio only if you're, you're doing audio. Of course, video as well. But then maybe insert or embed your YouTube video directly here so that we can access the video here as well. You could even create your video using Microsoft Teams, download the video, and then upload it to YouTube, and then try to bring it in to your ePortfolio. I think that uh, might be a good option as well. I talked with Susie also about Internet uh, Archive. This is another service that you can upload audio and video for free and embed it into your ePortfolio, into your own public space. Okay, this is Internet Archive. These are videos that I've created. This is what it looks like. You can go into these videos and share these or embed those 
into any HTML kind of block that you're using in your ePortfolio. So you can share the item, right, and click and drag, copy and paste the embed code. So that's another option. Internet Archive and YouTube. So I would think about that here. I, I like your navigational bars up here. Now, the only thing I would suggest, this is perfectly fine for this semester. But later, as you get into the BA and you start taking classes in applied linguistics and teaching methodology and practicum, in addition to skills development, then you're going to probably decide to change your navigational bar to reflect those types of classes that you're going to take later on. So my suggestion, while it's still, uh, you st while you still don't have a lot of content in your ePortfolio, is I would suggest to change, first of all, I would change this to home. So change everything from Spanish to English. You can have a home page here and then have another title that might say skills or English skills, for example, and then put each of these pages, reading, writing, listening, and speaking, grammar and context and culture, underneath a title called skills. And um, you can look at some examples. Uh, I know Susie and I think Jazz and many have created similar ways of organizing. And this will just set you up for adding to the same navigational bar later on the different other categories of classes that you're going to take later on like I said applied linguistics practicum and so on this is just a suggestion if you want to leave it like this for now that's fine for this class because again we don't have a lot of content but I want you to think as much as possible long term for this space all right this is the intention for this assignment is not something that is just for this class I hope that you maintain this space throughout your academic career, your ap academic time here, as well as your professional career later on. So let's take a look here at some of the sub pages. So reading, very good. I like how you're using uh, some text here to kind of describe what it is we're looking at. Um, I would again think about how you want to bring in audio and video, as I mentioned earlier, and you can let me know if you have any uh, questions about doing that. Okay, very good. I like uh, what you have here. Look at writing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is good. Now, you might want to think about inserting some headings. I, I, I like how you've included text off to the right, but I wonder if Maybe you create a little bit more space in between, or maybe you, you divide up. I'm not sure. It's not bad. I mean, I can see that you've got some here. You've got, um, you have your heading off to the right. I guess I'm kind of used to either having it centered or even off to the left, having like the headings. Like maybe you have this all the way to the flush left, and then underneath each of your artifacts, but it's it's so it's okay. Um, now, I if you're still working on your reflections, think about how you want to place your vi audio and videos, like where you want to locate those videos. Yeah, right. I like how you've included the team image here of your classmates. Make sure you have their permission to publish to your ePortfolio. Very good. Like, very nice visuals here right away in listening and speaking. Podcasts. Yeah, good. All right. And grammar and context. Yeah. I really like how you're organizing your content. Um, looks, uh, looks good. So I think the only thing left is to think about how you want to place your videos in your space. Notice that, again, the Google Drive, if you're going to include a document, you're going to need to publish it or share it publicly within Google Drive first in order to be able to see it in your uh, Google Sites. If you have any questions about how to do that, uh, let me know. But that's why, as you see here, that uh, it's not accessible. 
we can't uh, we can't see it. So uh, I did double check that as well. If you have any questions, uh, Diane, let me know. You've got a really good start. I like what you've done with your ePortfolio. And um, yeah, try to finish up for this Friday. And uh, yeah, shoot me an email if you have, or a chat if you have any questions about uh, anything that uh, we I've talked about here uh, today. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, we got time for a few more. Diana. Okay, Diana. All right, I like the um, I like the main page. This is pretty good contrast here. No, look at uh, I like how the I just like the color scheme. It's simple. It's easy to read. I like it. Now we have here. Uh, we've got an image, got a greeting, great. All right, very good. I like, I like the main page. I really, uh, this, this is a very cool template um, for me personally. Like a lot of this is just subjective, right? Um, double check your spelling. Watch the video below, W-A-T-C-H. Um, Okay, good uh, homepage about me. Let's take a look at that. Okay, maybe you... Yeah, so I don't know if you want to add... Like, notice here, it's a little bit... You get lost the, the menu up here. I don't know if you have some options to choose the background, um, but notice that this gets lost. The home, about me, and artifacts, the contrast gets lost between the color of the, contact, uh, color of the text in the background. Now, when you scroll down, it's fine, but still, for some reason, I don't know, it looks like we're just missing either a title or maybe a change in color. So see what options you have for, for that. Maybe you have my educational philosophy up here at the top, right? And because again, when you first go into this, it's like, okay, where am I? Is there anything here until, and if I don't scroll down, I might even miss it. I may just go back and say, well, there's nothing here. I'm going to go back. So think about that. And yeah, I think having an educational philosophy, that's great. Check your spelling. I would probably capitalize educational and also philosophy. And I probably would remove the period after philosophy. But I, I think that's great to have an educational philosophy in there. Now, artifacts, I think I would change the heading from, uh, from artifacts to maybe skills development for this semester, since everything that we're contributing to uh, relates primarily to skills development. Um, and then later you can create other categories like applied linguistics, teaching methodology, and practicum to your navigational menu along the top. Notice right away, look at the difference between the contrast here. This is much better than the About Me, if you just compare the two, right? So I like this. I don't know if there's a way to bring up artifacts a little bit higher. looks like there's a little bit of space that's not necessary, perhaps. Um, all right, so you scroll down. Now, now what I would try to do... Uh, Diana is, and I don't know if this is possible in this, with this template, but I would suggest that you really build sub pages. Notice that in this case, you have all of your artifacts on one page. I would suggest having separate pages for the different types of artif artifacts, at least one page for listening, speaking, and one page for the others. Many of your classmates have created sub pages for each class. You don't have to do that. But I would say at least two subpages under a heading called skills, I think, would be your best bet. Thinking long term, thinking later down the road when you continue to add to your ePortfolio. If you make some of these decisions now, I think it's going to make it easier later on. So that's what I would suggest. But you've, I, I really like this template. This is really cool. I like what you've done so far, um, but I have uh, just take some of my suggestions um, and uh, see what you can do 
with your ePortfolio and let me know if you have any questions. Send me a, an email or a chat and if you have any questions. All right, one more. Uh, with, uh, let's look at Elizabeth's ePortfolio. All right. Yeah, I like the background. Now notice here, this is interesting, and this is probably part of the template, but notice how a busy background in this case works because there is an inserted background, this block, with text, and it just makes it really easy to read. You can scroll down here and see. I like the menu here. I just This is a really cool template. It's different. You've got the navigational bar here along the, the middle. You've got home, welcome. Let's click on that. All right. So that's cool. It takes you to uh, kind of an introduction about this ePortfolio and maybe a video. This looks like a space for a video, perhaps. And that's... Uh, okay, no, no problem. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, but I like how you've set that up. Then you've got subjects. Now, this, uh, in this case, Ellie has decided to set up as subjects. And for now, for this semester, that's perfectly acceptable, um, and I don't see a problem with doing that. I'm thinking long-term, and I want you to think long-term, Ellie, l later on when you have subjects like applied linguistics, you have subjects that fall under the category of teaching methodology, you have some of your practicum classes, you're probably going to want to decide to change and modify this navigational bar to create those topics, those categories of classes that you're going to take later on. Right now, all of your courses in Prope relate primarily to skill development or English skills. So you could, instead of writing subjects, you could put, like, for example, skills or skill development or English skills, and everything that you have underneath these subpages would fall under that category. And then later on next year, you could add uh, another category, another uh, heading here that says, let's say, applied linguistics, another one for practicum, and so on. And then you could continue adding your artifacts to those subpages that fall with, within those areas, if that makes sense. So here, I would continue doing what you've, you're doing here. You've got grammar. Let's see. And maybe you're still working on some of these, but I'm just going to see what takes me. All right. So this... Slides over. Yeah, this is cool. I like this template. This is different. Get it, go to reading. Kind of slides over. That's cool. All right, I like that. So this, uh, yeah, this is really good. I like how you've included some text. You've included an image of the artifact and an audio or video. So that's the idea. I like it. Let's go back to listening and speaking. Got text. Right, and so you know, maybe you're still working. Hopefully, you can include a few more artifacts. But yeah, this is exactly what uh, what I would uh, try to do. Is you you've got a good balance between navigation, a good navigational system. You've got some text to kind of provide some context. You might even decide to provide less text. Right, you uh, don't feel like you have to have a lot there, but if maybe a heading or just um, a couple of sentences to provide some context about what it is we're looking at, and then let the reflection, the audio or the video reflection, then expand on what it is we're looking at uh, here in terms of the artifacts. So I'm assuming, Ellie, that you'll have additional artifacts that will appear below, right? So you will just scroll down and see additional um, artifacts. Is that uh, correct? Okay, and are you going to have a, a reflection for each artifact or, or not? Okay. Yeah, so you get a good start, Ellie. I like uh, what you have here. So, uh, yeah, keep at it and let me know if you have any questions about, um, you know, about your uh, ePortfolio. Let me ask one more question here. Can you tell me, Ellie, how you how you included the audio? 
how you embedded the audio. All right, so, um, yeah, so, and th the reason I'm asking, yes, I can hear it. This is perfect. Um, and, like, I really like how you did this, and I, the reason I'm asking is because I know a lot of you are trying to do the same thing. You're trying to embed an audio or video within your space, within your ePortfolio. There are a lot of ways to do that. Um, I would suggest that you reach out to Ellie and if you have some questions about how to do this uh, using OneDrive. Many of you are using Google Drive, but you might be able to still use a Google Sites, but still embed a file, an audio or video file from OneDrive over. There still might be a way to do that. Um, and I would explore that to see if that is a possibility, especially those of you who are using Google Sites. Um, now, uh, you know, you won't, I'm, I'm thinking again long term, right? So this is going to be perfectly acceptable for uh, your classes here at the university. But, you know, eventually you're going to be out of the university. And I really hope that you have these spaces that you can that you keep these up to date. And some of these audios and videos might be better served in some public space like YouTube or, um, you know, uh, Internet Archive. I've been talking a lot about today. That is also another option to share audios and videos. So again, you know. It's okay. You think about how you want to to do this, and but I really like how this works. And it sounds like using OneDrive, you should be able to insert this player. And this is the idea: is to be able to insert this player automatically into your ePortfolio. So that way, you just click right here. This is just can't. It doesn't get any easier than that. It do, it doesn't even take you to another window. You can listen to the reflection and, and look at the artifact at the same time. So again, I think this is ideal. This is like the ideal situation where you can try to do all of that. And uh, I'll try to explore myself because honestly, I haven't tried myself to try to embed a OneDrive file, audio file into something like Wix. So I'll look, that, I'll look into that also and see if I need to create a short video on how to do that. But and it looks like it's possible, and uh, this looks like a good option for many of you who are going to be thinking about doing um, an audio reflection instead of a video. All right, guys, uh, it's a little bit over, um, but I want to go ahead and conclude there. I was able to go through uh, today, leave a recording. These are the ePortfolios that I left comments on today in class. And so take a look at... Maybe today's recording, if um, you want to uh, see what I have to say about your ePortfolios. But they really come together nicely. Uh, make sure that you're keeping up, trying to finish for this Friday. We need to finish our ePortfolios by this Friday. Friday, uh, the first part of class, we're going to have our TOEFL review. This is going to be for grade, for your final grade. Um, so... Uh, plan on that. Make sure you're here on time this Friday, and then we'll spend the rest of the day on Friday to finalize your ePortfolios. Again, we want to fr try to finish this Friday. Continue making changes and making sure that you're contacting me if you have technical issues or uh, just questions or challenges in making 
your e-portfolio. Please don't wait until Thursday night or Friday night to reach out to me with some issues or problems you're having with your e-portfolios. I'm per it's my purpose is to spend these last two weeks working on your e-portfolio. So don't put it to the, to the last minute um, and, and continue asking your questions, checking also with your classmates, your teammates, sharing everything that you're doing and asking each other for help so that we're working together to try to get your answers resolved as soon as possible and getting your e-portfolio completed as soon as possible. All right, any final questions, guys, about your e-portfolio? Yes, go ahead. All right, what do you think, guys? Do you have to include artifacts from every class in Prope? All right, anybody else have recall what the checklist refers to in terms of artifacts from other classes? That's right. So here I'm asking for at least five artifacts for, from listening and speaking from our class and at least five from other propate classes. They can be all from one other propate class or they can be any combination of any other propate classes as you wish. So you could have artifacts from all from writing if you want or all from grammar. Or if you just want from grammar and writing those five other artifacts, that's fine. Or if you want to include a little bit from each of your other propic classes, one from each or one or two from each other propic classes, that's also fine. It's up to you. But we should have at the end of the day at least 10 artifacts in total, five from our class, five from other propic classes. Hey, does that uh, answer your question, Vanessa? Yeah, you're welcome. Any other questions? No, that's okay. And your advice was good advice uh, then in terms of overall, you know, making decisions about artifacts overall, right? And and you might decide later on as you're, you know, you get into fifth semester, sixth semester, you might even turn around and remove some artifacts depending on, you know, what your objective is and what your feelings are about your own um, e-portfolio. So, yeah, it was good, uh, good advice. Any other questions, my friends? No. no. All right, guys, we'll stop there. Enjoy your Tuesday. And tomorrow we'll, we'll pick up, we'll have some time again to continue working on our ePortfolio. Keep working outside of class as you need to and send me uh, messages as you need to as uh, questions come up. All right, guys, thanks. Take care. We'll talk to you tomorrow.